What is going on everybody? So in today's video we're going to be talking about air fittings and uh, if if you have a you know an air compressor or if you worked in a mechanic garage you know and you had to use air tools then most likely you've experienced or used an air fitting and so air fittings they go onto the bottom of air tools and it's what connects the air tool to like your hose, um, your air hose and so um, here we have a Ingersoll ran uh, pneumatic driver, like impact driver, and so these drivers require a lot of air, um, and so usually that's measured in CFM, uh, cubic feet per minute, and um, if your air fitting, ha you know, if the hole in the air fitting, the inside diameter is small, then it's not going to allow uh, enough air to get to your gun in time. Um, for your gun to work at its best. Now it's gonna work, you know, don't get me wrong, it's still gonna work, but at its best. So another one you'll see here, uh, paint guns. Paint guns are, you know, notorious for just demanding a ton of air, and it's the same thing, you know, you're gonna see your air fitting at the bottom right here, and you can see that it has this little small hole, and um, you know, you really gotta just uh, have a compressor that can supply enough air. So one way, one little trick to get a lot of air into your air tools um, is to open up your air fitting. Uh, and you can see here, this is an aftermarket fitting and it is already uh, wide. So it, it's, it's much wider than this fitting right here. You can see this is your standard steel fitting and the hole is very small compared to this aftermarket fitting right here where the hole is very large. So these are called high flow air fittings and then these are just going to be your standard fittings. Um, so one difference is that these are also aluminum and they're really lightweight versus um, steel so they're a little bit heavier. But um, one cool thing about steel and the trick that I'm going to show you is that steel is a lot stronger and more durable. So they last longer over time. And um, the other cool thing is you can convert your standard air fittings into a high flow fitting. So uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. That's the point of this video for today is to convert your standard fittings into high flow fittings and really get the most out of your air tools. So let's get started. All right, so before we get started, uh, I do have to run you guys through some math, and I already did the math to save some time, but uh, unfortunately, we do have to talk about math, so don't worry, it's not gonna be too painful. But um, as you can see here, we have our fitting, and this is just the regular standard size, and we're gonna take our uh, dial caliper, and we're just gonna go ahead and measure this fitting. And you can see we get 5.2, right there and um, so right here I wrote 5.4 uh, I think I got a bunch of different readings but um, 5.2 either way we're gonna round down to five millimeters right there so we're just gonna let's see right here so we're just gonna round down to five millimeters for the small neck and uh, another thing we're gonna measure this is the really important part actually is this part right here so if we measure that neck, we get 7.8. Now, that's pretty important. So you can see here, we got 7.8 right there. And um, that's gonna be for the small one. Now, here's the aftermarket one. That's a lot larger. So we can, we can see what the size is on this. So the sizes on this one, we get 7.7. .7. Let's see where we're at. Whoops. 7.6 around there, 7.7. .7. So here you can see here um, for the inside diameter we get 7.7. .7. And the next size on this one is, once again we're going to measure right here, so the next size right there is 9.57. And here we get 9.6, so pretty much we're in the same ballpark. Okay, so now we want to talk about one thing I don't think I have. Oh, here we go, wall thickness. So we're going to measure the wall thickness on 
this and we get roughly one millimeter or 1.1 millimeter for the wall thickness. So that's important, but remember, again, this is aluminum. So aluminum, you're gonna want a thicker wall, whereas steel, we can get away with a little bit. And uh, you can see here, the wall thickness is two millimeters. So now, here we're gonna talk about drill bits. So this drill bit right here, I believe, is a quarter inch. Yeah, this is a quarter inch drill bit. And this drill bit is 6.34 millimeters. So you can see right here, I wrote uh, drill bit 6.3 um, with the wall thickness being 1.5 for steel. And then when you subtract the difference between the neck right here and the drill bit, um, that's gonna give you that 1.5. Um, and then I subtracted 0.2 in, to really just like, you know, uh, for his maximum. So the maximum size drill bit we can go with is a seven millimeter. So this drill bit, once again, right here is a 6.3. So we're definitely playing it safe if we use a quarter inch. You're playing it safe and you can see it doesn't fit, right? You can see it doesn't fit. So it, it, um, it's still gonna give you some gains. Now, here we have a nine, uh, I believe this one is a nine thirty seconds. So this is a nine thirty seconds drill bit. And you can see here, this is 7.1 millimeter. So 7.1. Now remember, um, our next size is 7.8 on here. So you see here on, on our standard steel fitting, we have a neck size of 7.8. This drill bit is 7.1, so we're still within tolerance to drill this out without it breaking, okay? So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and we're going to drill this out. So going back to this really fast, here's the drill bit that, this is the larger, 930 seconds at 7.1, and you can see it fits in there um, perfectly. So that's gonna be the goal that we're trying to achieve with this. So you can see here, this doesn't fit, right? Doesn't fit at all, and then this fits. Whoops, this fits nicely, right? So again, this doesn't fit, this fits. Okay, so the goal is to open this up to this size. So. Now that we know that, and we know uh, that we want to just use a max of seven millimeters. I know this one's like 7.1 or something like that. Um, but because of the wall thickness, we, shall, we should be okay. Um, I'll do some tests, don't worry. But that's gonna be the goal, is to open this up and get it to be even with this. And um, that way, you can just turn all of your fittings that you have into this high flow fitting without having to buy new fittings. So that's the goal. So um, let's go ahead and drill this out and then start running some tests. All right. Okay, so we're all set up on the drill press and it's in our vise. And this is a cross slide vise. So be sure to check out my review on the cross slide vise. I'll put a link up for that. Um, and so, now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna center it into position. But just to let you guys know, it is level. So yes, it is level. We're looking at this right here. And you can see that it's leveled. So that's really important um, when we're drilling the larger diameter. We're gonna start off with the quarter inch bit. And that is pretty safe. Um, we're gonna be within like a really good margin of error. So we're gonna start with that, and then we're gonna move on up to the larger bit, which is gonna be this one. So we're just gonna uh, do it uh, in steps. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my vise so that I get a pretty good, there we go, that 
should be good right there. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and power it on. And just come down nice and slow. So there you see, if we move it out of the way here, so we get 6.4, which is about right. That's, that's uh, what we should get. Let's measure the drill bit, 6.3, 3.7, 6.4. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to swap the bits out and put in this new larger bit. All right, so let's do that. Okay, so now we have our larger bit in place. So you can see here, this is the 7.1 bit. This is the 930 seconds bit in place here. And make sure everything is lined up, good to go. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and take this out and measure and see where we're at. So right here, whoops, we had 7.2, let's zero it out. We're at 7.2 millimeters. So that's still within spec. Um, we're going to go ahead and now we're going to measure this. This one is 7.6, but remember the neck size is a little different. So right here you can see that they're pretty much the same size. And if you look in there, right, yep, you can see the neck hasn't been compromised or anything like that. So looking good. So now we're gonna go ahead and test this um, and see how much air flows out of this compared to this one and see if drilling it out uh, is just as good as buying an aftermarket high flow fitting. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're going to measure the time it takes for the compressor, uh, the tank pressure to drop from 40 to 120. So we're gonna we're gonna time this drop in pressure uh, at with a paint gun at wide open. And um, before we do that, before we test the fitting that was drilled out, we're gonna test a stock fitting, one that has not been drilled out, one that is just OEM, and we're gonna just test that. And you can see that this measures in at 1 point or 5.1. And we're going to start it at 140, so we're going to just take it to 140, and we'll bump the PSI up, we'll bump the tank pressure up to 100, yeah, it's a little bit, yeah, right there. So it's at 100 pressure to the gun, and uh, we're going to take it to... Okay, so now it's at 140. So now we're gonna go from 140 to 120. All right, here we go. We're gonna take it to 120. All 
All right, so that's 120 right there. And I know this angle is a little weird, but I'm trying to just, you know, I just want to show you guys that um, this is a true test. I'm not trying to cheat this test. So I'm trying to get the gun action and the gauge action. So let me know in the comments if you want me to do another test where I have, you know, like um, a shot, a direct shot of the gauges and a direct shot of the gun. So let me know in the comments. Also, uh, let me know how this review is going. Uh, leave, a, leave a comment down below. Subscribe and uh, hit that like button to, to, you know, to just show your support for the channel. All right, so now that was with the OEM fitting. So now what we're gonna do is swap this fitting out and we're going to replace it with the drilled out fitting. Okay, so now um, I did switch. I moved the camera so that you can see the gauge a little bit better. But uh, here you can see now we're, we're on um, the bigger fitting here. So you can see this is the bigger one um, at 7 point, 7 point it, it measured at 7.2, but it got moved. But you can see that this is the, this is the bigger hole. So just hook this up. Okay, so now we're gonna uh, take it to 140 again. Okay, so now we're gonna start that timer and run this again. And we're gonna take it to 120. All right, let's go. All right, so there you have it. So that's with the drilled out fitting. And now we're gonna do the aftermarket high flow fitting and test that one. All right, so let's do that. Okay, so now we have our, um, our aftermarket fitting right here. Okay, so now we have it, it's here at 140. We're gonna take it to 120 and we're just gonna go ahead and run it. So ready and go. All right, so now let's uh, compare the times to all three and see which one was the best. All right, so let's uh, get this all put together and see who comes out the winner. All right, so we have the results in for the high flow fitting test and the control came in at 1323, which is just the OEM. Uh, we didn't do anything to it. And the DIY modified came in at 1312. And the aftermarket uh, came in at 1213. Now that is a huge shocker because the aftermarket came in a full second faster. And the control and the DIY modified are almost identical in times yet there's a pretty big difference in, in the size of the hole, whereas the aftermarket and the DIY, um, the hole size are pretty much this, you know, the same. So that was uh, kind of interesting, huge shocker for me. And um, so I thought, you know, the paint gun is also a bottleneck and probably something happened in the testing. So now what I want to do is isolate just the fittings and see what kind of results we get from just the fittings and um, hopefully this changes things. But I think we'll be in for a big surprise. So you're not gonna wanna miss this second test. Be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think happened in the result and why the aftermarket is a full second faster. Uh, I'd love to hear your result or your, you know, your comments, your feedback. All right. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started on the second test. Okay. So here is our stock one and here's our dial indicator, dial caliper. And you can see here it's 4.9 right there. 
So we're going to run this through um, our air hose. And so what we're going to do here, so we're going to just plug that in and we're just going to run it straight from the air hose. So we're just going to run it straight from the air hose and and then we're going to slide this up and you can see that air is coming out so you'll see right like okay so that's going to be that's going to be our test for this that's that's how we're going to do this that's going to be our test so what i realize is that the paint gun was bottlenecking um you know i mean there's only like so much air that this paint gun can release you know so the bottleneck was in the paint gun and um, you know so you can see right here um, that I wanted to redo the test I want to redo the test so that it is just the fitting so we're testing just the fittings all right, so we're going to take this on up to 100 PSI right there. And we're going to sit here and we're going to take our small valve. We're going to go ahead and we're going to plug it in. All right. And when this slides up, that's when we're going to start it. We're gonna wait for this to go to from 140 to 120. All right, so it's a little, it's at 140. So now we're gonna go ahead and slide it. And uh, once we slide it, then we're gonna start. And when we stop, that's when we're gonna stop. We're gonna slide it back down. All right, ready and All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just, oops, we'll go ahead and plug this in, like that. And, um, yep, we're gonna go ahead and plug that in. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is take this to 140. All right, so now it's at 140. So now we're just gonna slide this up and we'll be good to go. All right, three, two, one. All right, so here we have the purple one. Ready? One, two, three. All right. So another thing is that you can see like just how big that opening is. How tiny that is, you know? So that's like really tiny. Okay, so here's our modified fitting right here. And uh, in terms of in, like integrity of the fitting after all of this has been done, uh, we'll go ahead and hook it up. And it's kind of leaking a bit, I guess, just from all of the, but you can see here, I'm, you know, it's, this is just, you know, going back and forth, the wobble test, I guess, everything like that. And um, it's, it's working just fine. So, you know, this is pretty much like, here, if I zoom out right here, and you can see that it is holding up fine. It's, it's good. I mean, you know, this hose right here is, you know, it is, there's no problem. So I would say that this is gonna hold up just fine. Um, you know, this, this, is, this is gonna hold up just fine in terms of uh, the wall thickness and everything like that. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll measure this and see just how thin it is. 
compared to this one right here. So let's get that dial caliper again and get some measurements. Okay, so now we're just gonna take another measurement so you can see here it's zeroed and there we have the 1.2, 1 1.02 millimeters for the wall thickness. And we'll see what this one is right here. So this one is, here we go, right here, 0 0.9, 0 0.91, 0 0.89, 0 0.88. So remember that this is steel, so it's going to be stronger. So you can go a little thinner on steel because it's stronger compared to aluminum, where it's a little bit weaker. So. Uh, yeah, this this is holding up. This is the modification. Just go ahead and uh, drill it out, and you're good to go. So, in terms of you know um, when to do this, and should you buy the aftermarket fittings, I would say if you already have the fittings in your garage, then go ahead and drill them out. And if you're not comfortable drilling them out to uh, the seven millimeter limit, then definitely use the six millimeter, which is gonna be the quarter inch drill bit. And uh, you're still gonna see an improvement in flow. Um, but if you are starting out and you're gonna buy all new fittings, then it's, it's your choice to go either way. Um, the price points on these, I think, if you buy the Harbor Freights, if you get, if you use a coupon, when these go on sale for a dollar, that's the best time to do a modification like this. Um, but I think they re these retail uh, for two dollars, and you can get a pack of five with a coupler for like ten dollars. So you're gonna save like eight dollars um, if you do this method. If you drill it out, so you, I mean you're gonna save two dollars. I'm sorry, you're gonna save two dollars. So. Um, the best time to do it is if you are going to do it to all your fittings in the garage, you already have fittings and you're just going to open them up, or the Harbor Freight has a coupon, and the coupon is, you know, a dollar off, so you can, you can pick these up for a dollar, then go ahead and just pick them up and drill them out and uh, you'll be good. So, yep, I hope you guys like this video, and if you want to see a video on this Harbor Freight paint gun in action, uh, leave a comment down below. Definitely, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe and uh, give this video a like. It really helps out the channel. And thanks again, everybody, for watching, and I'll see everybody next time.